Hello everybody, I am just Lance and I would love to welcome you all back for another video. I hope you all are doing well. Um, I'm trying to get back to at least one video a week, so here we go guys. Um, anyways, the name might be a little confusing, um, but you'll see why I named it what I did. Anyways, this is pretty much an all British inspired shave. So let's take a look at what we're going to use. The soap I'm going to be using is Taylor of Old Bond Street, Tobbs Sandalwood. The brush is my vintage Rooney Best Badger brush. This brush is called the BB24. Really nice Best Badger knot. Not the greatest on backbone, but it's badger. It's a soft hair. Um, it's got a sticker down here that says Brooks Brothers because these brushes back in the 40s were made by Rooney for the Brooks Brothers store. You can't talk about England without talking about the crown. So I'm going to be lathering up my tobs in my white porcelain Phoenix Shaving Crown King Scuttle. The brush I'm going to use, or not the brush, the razor I'm going to be using as a backup is my 1992G1000. It's basically like a knack. Got your TTO knob here on the neck. And this, of course, was made in England. And the blade is a big bin on its first use. Now, for the true star of this show. Oh, and to finish it off, I'm going to be using a vintage Avon aftershave in what looks like a rich person car. Fancy English Rolls Royce or something like that. British Rolls Royce or Bentley or something. I'm not sure exactly what kind of car that is. I'm not sure what they call that because it doesn't have the sticker. I need a drink of water and my shaverage, a bottle of water. Now, let me grab the true star of this show. As you can see, I'm not sure if that's right way up or that's right way up or that's right way up. But this little case says Sheffield on it because the razor I call Sir William. Actual ivory scales. This is a six eighths. Not sure of the hollow. But it has here on this side, I don't know if you can see it, but it says William Butler, Trinity Works, made in Sheffield. It also has the shakes, a line from a Shakespeare play, which says, keen as this razor, razor's edge, invisible. And then it says, shows here, it says, love, um, love life's lost or something like that. I'll put the description, I'll put it down in the description. It says Shakespeare beneath that. And look guys, I don't know if you can see it. It's actually got William, Sir William Shakespeare's face etched into the blade. And this shave would not be possible if it was not for Guy Solis of the Shaving Chronicles and the Gentleman's Edge is his other channel. But he took this, tore it down, polished it, honed it. There's some deep scratches here on the back side of the blade. And if he tried to get those out, it would alter the shape of the spine. Like I said, 6-8 round point. And um, 
he completely did that. He went as far as actually taking and having to reduce the diameter of the pins. And he added some um, washers inside because the scales were a little close to the blade. And there was a couple of rub, there was a couple of rub marks on the back side of the scales. So let me go ahead and set my razor tray over here with my straight in it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get my American Icon Mickey Mouse spoon. Little spoon came in a set my girlfriend and I got for our son. The spoon was just a little bit big for his mouth when he is learning how to feed himself. So I said, heck with that, I'm going to use it for shaving. This cream is not quite the consistency of a cream no more. It's a little dry, but you know what? A little bit of water will fix it right up. Smear that down. And I, to save time, I'll go ahead and I'll mix this up in the scuttle. Um, I'll cut away, mix this up in the scuttle, get lathered up, and then I'll be back. All right, guys. Cool thing about this razor is it's got this rasping up on the top and on the bottom of the tang. I think I even said that there was a little bit of jimping, jimping in the bait. So let's see. Took it right off. Very nice. Sorry about the sound of the water, guys. Just knocking it right down. I am definitely very, very happy to have this in my arsenal. Just mowing down the whiskers. From what I understand, from everything that I've learned about this razor, Oh, and by the way, I don't know if it's, I imagine it's the, um, run. As far as batches, whatever you want to say. This razor 
actually has N-O with the number one after it. She's just whacking this stuff down. This makes the third razor that guy worked on for me. The first one, unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to use it because <laughs> it got lost in the USPS. But it was a Sheffield Wade and Butcher going through the lip. Wipe my blade here real quick. I'm not as fast at this as some of you guys out there, but I'm learning. Right there. Okay, that's the first pass down. I'll be back for pass two. We'll go guys across the grain. You know what guys? I'm just going to go against the grain. Um, I'm not real comfortable with bringing a straight open blade up near my left eye. So, let's go ahead and let's do it against the grain. Yeah, it really sucks. Somebody say, man, what happened to your eye? I was shaving and I cut it. What'd you shave with? <laughs> Straight razor.
Yeah, where it says loves lives. Whatever it says on the blade. Um, it's actually the title of a play of Shakespeare's. Anyways, good joke for you guys. This is something you could tell anybody. You could tell your grandparents and they would probably be, well, that is the names of them. Anyways, one time there was a guy. He lived in the big city. New York, Chicago, somewhere like that. And, um, uh, anyways, he, um, uh, Besides, he wants to move out to the country. And, um... Uh, so he moves out to the country, buys an old farmhouse. And he's sitting there and out on his porch. And he says, you know what? I have a farm. Ooh. I have a farm, but I got no farm animals. I'm gonna go get me some farm animals. So anyways, I'll do the cleanup with the um, G1000. Anyways, he uh, goes in search of farm animals. Anyhow, one moment guys. Anyways, he's on his way down the road. And he sees a lady out in her yard throwing grain out to the chickens. Nice. So he Walks up to the lady and he says, Excuse me, miss. Could I buy one of your chickens? She looks at him and says, Sure, but out here we don't call them chickens, we call them pullets. He says, Well, can I buy one? So she says, Sure. So she gives him this pullet, gives her money. And goes on his way. A little while later, he sees an old farmer loading up a bunch of roosters on a trailer, on the back of a truck for market. So he goes up, tells the guy a story. I just bought this farm and they need animals. Can't buy one of your roosters. So the old timer looks at him and says, Well, sure, but out here we don't call them roosters, we call them cocks. Well, can I buy one? Yeah. So he gives him the money and gives the guy his bird and the fellow goes on his way. Well, anyways, a little while later, he's uh, walking down the road, bird underneath each arm. And um, he sees a guy with some donkeys. Hang on, guys. Still getting this using my right hand stuff down. So, anyways. Goes up to this guy with these donkeys. He says, excuse me, sir. Can I buy it? one of your donkeys. So, the old guy looks at him and says, sure. But out here, we don't call them donkeys, we call them asses. The guy says, well, can I buy one? Yeah. So, 
guy pays them the money. The old timer picks one of the animals out of the lineup. Brings them up, gives them the guide rope, and says, here you go. But I want to let you know one thing about this here animal. What's that, sir? Sometimes he'll stop, and the only way to get him to go is if you scratch him between his ears. Grace says, okay. So... He's walking along. In fact, I'm going to finish up around my mouth with my G1000. Not do any cleanup necessary on that with that. So, anyways, gives him the animal and he's walking down the road. All of a sudden, the Ass just stops, stops dead, wouldn't go. So, you know, he, uh, he's like, oh man, I'm not gonna get this animal to go. He, uh, Members. Oh, I got a scratch between the ears. But the man was worried. If, uh, about the birds running off. So he's like, man, what am I going to do? I don't want these birds to run away. I just got them. So he sees these two little old ladies come walking up the road. And says, excuse me, ladies. Two of them stop, more kind of. And one says, yes, can we help you, young man? And he says, would one of you two ladies be so kind as to hold my cock and pull it while I scratch my ass? That's one you could tell your grandparents and not get in trouble. Just, I think I grabbed a big bin. Yeah, I did. So. Not quite on the level of Johan Granite of Shave and Butcher. Not quite as on the level of his jokes. Oh, missed a little spot right there. But it ain't bad. Yeah, there's, I don't know what it is. This time of the year, when it's cold outside, it's in the 50s here. Nothing nicer. Then a warm lather shave. But yeah, guys, seriously, if you ever need razor straps, um, nice razor straps too, contact guy. Of the Shaven Chronicles. Um, if you need a razor cleaned up, honed, evaluate it. Um, talk to Guy. He is. He is definitely knows what he's doing. I mean, granted my Shakespeare razor here wasn't in the kind of shape that my Wade and Butcher that he worked on was. 
which I really wish I had the razor because it came out beautiful. Seven eighths, three quarter hollow blade with a barber's notch. Yeah. But told my girlfriend, I told her as well, if you're ever out looking at razors, if it says made in Sheffield, Wade and Butcher, you know, um, if it's in good shape, get it. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and rinse off and be back for the album. Anyways, yeah, very little, very little touch up was needed with the, um, with the G1000, which I'm very happy. Um, I'll eventually be like all these straight razor guys going ahead and just whipping around zip 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 getting their face clean with a um, straight razor but considering I don't have a buttload of straight razor shaves under my belt not too bad so far Anyways, I'm going to go ahead, let this set for a bit, for a few more seconds, and I'm going to rinse it off. I'll see you for the post. That was a great shave, guys. Very, very happy with it. Only irritation I really got was around the mouth. Um... But here on the cheeks, very, very little, if any, on both sides in the neck. I missed a little spot right there, but I'm not going to reshape it. Um, but yeah, that, that Shakespeare razor. <laughs> Guy, hell of a smooth shaver, man. Hell of a smooth shaver. Awesome edge, as usual. Uh, you know. I, I honestly can say that Guy's Edge is the best edge I've ever used. The caveat to that is, it is the only edge I've ever used was his, but, you know, if, you know, he was the only guy that ever honed any of my razors, or worked on any of my razors, I would not complain one little bit. I want to shave hairs, not res remove my face for a whisperer's mask. If you watch The Walking Dead, you know what I'm talking about. But anyways, yeah, very, very happy with that shave. Couldn't be happier. You know, I'll get a few more shaves under my belt, and then, you know, maybe I'll be like the Ninja Master of straight razors, old uh, Dave Card. Man, that guy, he whips through a shave fast. Much faster than me. A lot of guys do it much faster than me, but you know what? I'm a beginner, leave me alone. I'm a noob, I'm a noob. <laughs> uh, T. Dickinson's witch hazel. Uh, da -da 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 -da. A little bit of Takata Aftershave Balm. I don't know if it's a British brand or English brand, but... We'll go with it. back to shaving my head before I do my post. Got too much bomb on my hand again. Dang. One of the downfalls with wet shaving and being blind. <laughs> but anyways.
Alrighty. Heck with it. There's quite a bit on here, so get some of this excess off. There we go. That's better. Now let's see how this here. This smells very close to Panand Clubman. Ooh, it don't burn like Panand Clubman. It burns worse. Ooh, that's got a bite. Oh yeah. Whew. Mother fudder. Mother fudder. Yeah, that's got a bite to it. But it smells great. I like it. I got a Duesenberg, which Excalibur, their Excalibur scent was in that. And uh, it was bone dry empty. So I think Taconic makes an aftershave they call Excalibur. So hell, I just might get that and put it in there. Anyways, old Rolls Royce. At least I think it's a Rolls Royce. I don't know. It looks like something that some prince or princess would ride in back in the day. Anyways, that's the shave, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Um... If this is your first time watching any of my videos, uh, likes, comments, subscriptions, always appreciate it. Um, yeah, we're going to try and get at least one video in a week from now on. And um, we'll see how that, see how that goes. I definitely want to do more than what I've been doing. Anyways, y'all take it easy. You have yourself a wonderful day, a beautiful night. Stay warm. Or stay cold, depending on whether you're north or south of the equator. And anyways, um, y'all take it easy, and I shall see all of you on the flip side of the blade. Bye-bye now.